Good evening, good evening, everybody. Um, I'm Maureen Zemrock, president of the North Daring Neighborhood Association. And tonight we're having a meeting to discuss um, 194 Auburn Street um, and the gas station suggestion of being put there and reopened. Um, tonight's speakers um, representing um, Site Design Associates and CN Brown is Tom Saucier. Is that correct? Saucier. I'm sorry. And um, also here tonight is Kevin Moore from CN Brown Company. Uh, Tom Saucier with Site Design Associates. Um, we're here tonight to present a proposal by CN Brown Company to reopen um, a historic business at 194 Auburn Street, which is the a fueling station for automobiles. Um, they also are proposing to open a heating oil office in that facility. Um, the building will be limited to fuel sales and heating oil office activity. There will be no servicing of automobiles there under this proposal. Uh, no convenience stores, basically just the historic use that's been there since 1955 or somewhere thereabouts with the added um, use of the heating oil office. We met with um, city officials uh, in the planning office and the code enforcement office, um, explained our proposal. Well, let me back up and tell you why we're here. In September 11th, the um, gas station, September 2011, the gas station was closed um, and wasn't reopened within a year. When that happens, your uh, grandfather's status expires. Um, a, a major or minor service station is not permitted in the current R3 zone. Um, so we met with city officials in the Planning and Code, Enforce code Enforcement Office and asked, how, what process do we need to use to reopen this gas station? Uh, their suggestion, they had a couple alternatives. Um, the best one seemed, there, the, there were two viable ones. One was a suggestion to rezone the site to a B2 zone where the use is a permitted, the use of service station is a permitted use or to go for a conditional rezoning to a B2. Uh, the difference between those two is is that the B2 zone has a wide variety of uses, um, more intense uses than, than maybe you'd want to see in this neighborhood. Um, the conditional B2, conditional rezoning, basically it stipulates what uses can be allowed in that B2 zone on that site. So we can limit the uses. Um, the dimensional requirements are all stipulated specifically for this site within the B2 zone. Um, so, if, say if CM Brown opened in 10 years and closed, all the other uses that are permitted in a B2 zone would not be allowed on that site. It would probably, and we haven't figured out with the city whether it would revert back to R3, and that might be part of the conditional uh, rezoning. There's a contract that you sign uh, with the city that outlines the dimensional requirements, the use, uh, what happens if the uh, business closes, and all the, all the details of that. Um, The process for doing all that um, is that we submit an application within two to three weeks of submission of the application to the planning department. Uh, we hold a neighborhood meeting. We send out notifications to the neighborhood. Um, and there's a planning board workshop. That workshop planning board takes um, reviews the project. I think technically that's not a public hearing when they have the workshop. They'll schedule a public hearing for another planning board meeting, or they might open that one up to that. The planning board's function is to make a recommendation to the city council on whether they believe that the conditional rezoning should proceed. The, the recommendation can be positive, it can be negative, either way it will go to the city council. If we received from the planning department a negative recommendation, you might need to rethink some of the terms of the contract or the conditions that will be applied to the rezoning. When it goes to the council, the council will have two readings of the con of the proposal to do the conditional rezoning, they'll do it at, typically at two consecutive consecutive council meetings. But if we, um, you know, if we get to the first council meeting, they said we'd like to tweak this and 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 you know make certain adjustments to the contract, and it might be a, a, a third meeting or a fourth meeting after the first one you go to. Um, both of those council meetings are open to the public to speak at at that time, and again we'll have the neighborhood meeting planning board public hearing so there's plenty of opportunity for input from the public 
It was suggested by city staff that we reach out to the North Deering Neighborhood Association before we do anything um, and meet with you folks, explain to you uh, what we're trying to do here. We haven't filed any applications. We haven't done anything except meet with the city um, before we talked with you folks. And uh, we held this meeting to explain the proposal and listen to concerns. I've got a site plan here, and basically the site plan represents the existing conditions out there. As part of the conditional rezoning, um, we'll probably propose some landscaping. There'll be some improvements to the building um, and um, possibly some site improvements to the walks and things like that. Um, as part of the heating oil office, there will be delivery, occasional couple delivery trucks on the site. Um, Park there in the winter they're on the road most of the time but they could be there if the drivers are gone for the night or something like that um, there is an opportunity to put a couple of those trucks inside move the garage doors off the front and put them around to the end and get the trucks inside um, so we're looking at that is one thing as part of this um, but essentially the, we're not proposing any changes to the curb cut, the building footprint, um, the gas pumps, the same number of gas pumps, the same gas pumps, not the same number. It'll be just the same gas pumps that have been there for, well, that were there when they closed in 2011. So, uh, made it kind of simple, but it, it is, we think, and I'll take any questions. Thank you. You said that uh, I'm trying to orient myself. The right hand side of the gas station. I'm looking at it straight ahead. I thought there was a road that leads down into the, uh, there's some housing oh, units down there. Small. On the right hand side? Left. 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 On the left hand yeah. side, that's where it is? <coughs> yeah. Okay, that's where, the, that's where that road is. And the right hand side is a house. Residential. Correct. A, a residential house that's away from it. Yep. Yeah. Okay, I just wanted to orient myself. Yeah, it's a 15 foot easement actually for the use of the people behind us. Oh, it is? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yes, sir. Thank you. Uh, are you, um, can you tell us of, of the condition and uh, age of the storage tanks for gasoline at that site? I cannot. Uh, Kevin, can you answer that right off? Yeah, they're put in 1988 and they're a 30-year warranty on those. Okay, there is, I'll, I'll, I'll take the question because we'll get it on the record too. Uh, they were installed in 1988 and there's a 30-year warranty. Thank you. <clears throat> Just, uh, I live kind of diagonal to the property. Um, on this, on Arbor the Street, on the side where the school is, I guess. Okay. 165 Arbor Street. Okay. Um, <clears throat> so I can see lightage and things like that. Is there any plans to change signage or lightage or in terms of hours that the lights are going to be on or that the signs are going to be up in terms of the brightness of the signs or is it just going to be what it was before? We were, Which was fine. Right now the proposal is what it was before, but to answer your question about hours, the hours will also be regulated in the contract zone, mm -hmm. and there's no intent to be open real late at night um, at all. It's selling fuel, and the only time you're going to sell fuel is when there's cars on the road. So. Yeah. And then in terms of the signage, any plans for a new sign, or is it just... <coughs> Kevin? Not, you know. The sign will probably stay as it is. The only thing we might change is where it says service center. It will stay, say, heating oil office, probably. It'll okay. be regulated by the city, too, whatever they allow. Okay. And for the record, the sign will stay as it is. Uh, the sign that says service center will be changed to heating oil office, and the signs will all be in any changes or implementation will be in conformance with the city ordinances. Right. Thank you. Yes, sir. How many trucks will be parked there? There would be um, two regularly there might be an occasional need for one more and there's there's a smaller delivery trucks um, so there, there could be three but we think we can put two in the building so and will it be self-service or you pump your own full i mean that oh, full, you service. full service okay. full service for the record oh. <laughs> you're in <laughs> Yes. Um, when it was open in, in the past, were there any issues with crime? Um, not to my knowledge. No. Not to our knowledge. Excuse me. Um, as you
you gotten any indication from the city that they have heard from anybody? Any neighbors? Anybody starting to, to raise their, some questions prior to? What I'm hearing is from uh, some of those, is that some people are beginning to really rethink this. You haven't heard from the school or any of those people? We haven't received anything from the city. in touch with any of you guys? No. That's okay. the purpose of this, hopefully, is to reach I mean, out. Ted, I, I had heard a couple of the same comments generally, that there were some neighbors, and that's why I asked about the neighbors. I go by there every day and I was, you know, you don't look at things and you, you know what's there, but you don't know where it is, so you just cleared me up. I thought that the road was in front of the station, but anyway. And some of the issue, I, I guess, with the budding neighbors is that <coughs> whiting, uh, Ted raised an issue that, and I think the guy directly across the street from you, on the other side, you know, on the other know. side of the yeah. road into yeah. London Moor, there's a house there. He had raised an issue that light signage, that thing was lit mm -hmm. all night, and that I think that was an issue that I'm hearing. So if, if there's some way that you can address that when you go into your proposal, I think that may stop some. The other thing I heard was what uh, someone had just raised about trucks being out there. Not that when it was a gas station, believe me. There was broken down cars out there. They were all in that yard. So, but you're telling me there'll be two heating truck, oil trucks, but they'll be underneath cover at night. I heard you say go inside the building, and you may have one small van outside. Well, it'll be a heating, might be a heating oil delivery Whatever. truck. That's a yeah. that's an improvement to what was yeah. there. Yeah. Trust me. And the other thing is, if you can put a pump out there that says free air. You will get this approved with no problem. <laughs> <laughs> I mean that. I mean that sincerely, really. <laughs> but that. I mean that was just generally what I yep. was hearing. Now you may get. I mean, I wouldn't take this as indicative of what the neighborhood will do when you send out your notice to right. the butters within 500 feet. I know. I know you will get at least some of the folks on Sanborn Street. You'll get some of the folks that are in that housing thing behind it and you'll get the next door neighbor or, and you might get some folks across the street. Mm -hmm. So I think, um, and I, I'm, I'm hearing you're not changing the building, you're not looking for any additional cuts on the curbing, it's, it, what you see is what's there. You, you're just, you want to reopen it to sell gas and put a fuel oil opposite in. Where Correct. people will stop in and sign up for fuel, and I'm assuming you'll be delivering, your trucks will be delivering out of there. you use the same tanks that are there. Will there be additional tanks on the property? No. So, well, if you're delivering fuel oil, where's that coming from? Out of the South Portland. Oh, so it's Portland. just a truck will be, oh, okay. Yeah. See, I think those are the kind of things that people will ask. And I think, uh, because there used to be a tank that was outside there. I don't know if it's still there or not. It's gone. Is that still there? No, it's gone. It's gone, okay. So that has been cleaned up. <clears throat> So I think that's just a couple of things yeah. in general. I thought maybe someone had passed those on to you, and that's where these guys were getting it from. The city might have reached out to a few people. Well, we actually we contacted the uh, your ward councilor as well. So. Oh, you mean John Coyne? Mm -hmm. Yeah, good luck with that. Nothing against it. But I mean, <laughs> we you guys are on TV. Memberships around 100, 100 and a half, but that's not indicative. This is a pretty big neighborhood, so mm -hmm. I think, when, like I say, when you reach out to the within 500, you're going to get a little bit more. So I think it's best to explain as much as you can in that letter that goes out. Sure. I think that'll be, but um, I'm not, I mean, me personally, I'm not hearing any. I live about, I don't know if I live within 500 feet or not. Um, so I don't know if we'll get noticed, but we'll watch it. I, I don't. I don't. I, I think those are the kinds of things you're going to hear from. Okay, Maybe great. I'm seeing something because it was never a big traffic issue. But I can tell you this: when when the gas station was open, the light to the school was not there. The lights that are there now, they regulate the traffic in the morning going into the school. They slow everybody down to 15. So I think that wasn't there. And there may be some people that are worried about the kids in the morning going in and out of that station, but I think it's still going to be regulated by the lights no matter what you do. Mm -hmm. So I, I, I can't remember, I got to remember if coming out of there, you're before the light or after the light? Right you're right on the light? Oh, okay. So the light controls you coming out of there? I wouldn't think it would, but 
because it's the schools. Right. Yeah, we haven't, we've got to update our survey. This is a survey plan from quite a while ago, so we don't have the left turn lane on it yet. Yeah, yeah that's the thing I'm, 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 I'm thinking people may be concerned about. So how do you get left? Because if you're not regulated by the lights, mm -hmm. where are you coming out? Mm -hmm. That's the only thing. I know the bus stop is there, just up above you, I think. But I'd have to look. So mm -hmm. I, I think that would be some of the issues that they may be talking about. And, um, Oh, he would? Coming out okay. right on the line. All right. Oh, that's good to know. Thank you. Yep. Just yes. to, um, sorry, just to follow up on that, um, there, someone has left me a question. They have safety concerns with cars getting back onto Auburn Street. Traffic seems to be the issue because children are there in the morning. It's a pretty busy intersection to begin with. Um, it's 15 miles as a child crossing section, but if they're if there's that concern of increased traffic, if there isn't a worry, or if the lights are gonna change, if there's gonna be a left-hand entry into the gap, I just didn't know if you could, if you know yet how that's gonna work, if at all it's gonna change. Yeah, we don't plan on any um, left turn lane into the site from there. Um, we expect that if it's not convenient for someone to turn in, they probably won't. Right. Um, but that, you know, that could change as we go through the process, but right now there is no plan for that. And it will be used with the lights that are already existing. Yes. To raise some what we talked yeah. about. Yes. You mentioned about improving the landscape. What about mm -hmm. the building itself? I, I know it's been dilapidated a little bit. Yeah. Is that going to be improved also? <coughs> yes. There will be some cosmetic work done on the building, and um, the doors actually will be moved from the front of it to the back, so there will be some... You won't be looking at garage doors on any of there you anymore. You're saying to the front to the back. Front to the end. Mm -hmm. um, so which end? Okay, so right now, mm -hmm. the doors, this is the canopy, yeah. this is the building. Right now the doors are here, Yeah. and we would put the doors here. Uh, is there enough room? Yes. All right, when you yeah. said that, I, think, I don't think there's enough room for to, for a truck yeah. to, to turn in there. Yeah. Right. yeah, we made sure there was before we told you that's what we're going to do. <laughs> I'm sure you did, <laughs> but I don't think so. <laughs> and I think so. And I'm sorry, you said the big full service. Huh? Yes. Okay. Yes, sir. How many employee vehicles will um, be on the site during a typical day? I would think it would probably be three there, probably two drivers and the uh, manager. The manager? And oh, to the office? And yeah, and two drivers. Okay. So who's going to pump the gas? The manager will have Really? Most of the time. Wow. Yep. And two pumps? There's two pumps, four fueling positions. Okay. And a, a question that was given to me was, will price of this gas, because it comes from South Portland, I believe you said? Is it a discounted rate compared to say the mobile down the street? Is it going to be a, a reason less, why? <laughs> you're always less expensive than mobile down the street. <laughs> Hopefully it stays that way. <laughs> is, that, is there something? You know, that's, I'm reading one of our... Yeah, that's a good question. Right? <laughs> Who knows what it'll be. Yeah. I'll put on no. Yeah, yeah, that's a good answer. Yeah, I think your biggest problem when you face that hood at the 500 area meeting, now I'm understanding, is going to be the traffic. Mm -hmm. Because sitting here with those lights, you're either going to back traffic up or they're going to crash turning into there. Because there are two lights out there. There's one when you're coming out of the school. You look at it, it's right there. And you're right, your station's over here. I just made and the two they're the, they're the two they're the two folks that, that are there for crossing guards. I know where they park. They park on the other side of your station in that road I'm talking about that goes down the Shalom House. There's a light right at the end of that road too. It lets those people that are in that lane come out in the morning and mm -hmm. turn right to go in town. So there's two lights your station is gonna have to contend with. Yep. We were just talking about that. If the people turn right out of your station trying to go to Portland, they're right at that light. They ain't even going to know what that says. Mm -hmm. So I think that's going to be your issues with the with the city of Portland and the traffic yeah. guy. 
How there's a there's a member of us, the vice president. She's not here tonight. I wish she was. She's a traffic expert, which I found out. And she brought that up in, a, in an email to us. Today. Who is it? Huh? Who is it? Her name is Ariel Greenlaw. She's moved into the neighborhood. But she said, if you're not doing an impact study of traffic from any of that, you better start now. That was what she said to us tonight, because that's what they're going to talk about. She has no problem with the with what you're doing with the property. But I think that's what the issue is going to hold mm -hmm. to, because those lights, I don't know how they sync them up, because they go red at midnight when there's nobody around there. I don't understand it. They're supposed to be letting people into the school and the buses out in the morning, but they just installed new cameras on all of the signals on Auburn now, and I think that's helping it. But that's I think that's what you got to hone into. And if you don't have that on your plan and, and ready to answer those questions when you go there, I think that's going to be the biggest problem out there. Yep, good. Tim and I were just talking about that because Tim lives right down the road, but you, you know, we don't notice it as much. Well, I think what he's uh, what he's probably trying to uh, say is that in the morning and in the afternoon on your side of the of Auburn Street inbound to Portland, they're either stopped at the light or backed up. So if someone coming out of your building heading inbound to Portland will have a little trouble getting out of there because it's backed up. And likewise, if they're coming from Portland and wanting to turn right. into your uh, building, they're going to be faced with that oncoming backed up traffic. Right. Um, so this is the consideration. Mm -hmm. um, but um, And also, I think uh, likewise, when they come out um, to head inbound uh, to Portland, they're going to be right on top of that light, so if it's uh, a stop light, it's going to be tough there if this one car backed up. But I just have to say, though, I uh, we had some stations closed in the past in the neighborhood, and you guys have done a great job as far as, you know, I, we realize it's closed, and there's yeah. only so much you can do to maintain it. Um, and I drive out there every day, and, you know, it's it, at least it's respectable, <coughs> looking, because it is empty, but you kept it up. And I know one time there was a whole fleet of people went in. I've never seen so many people going in from you folk, from somebody from your company and clean the place all up. And so that's, you know, that's, that's nice. Good. Thank you. Yep. And thanks for the information. Yeah. <clears throat> Just being across the street, <clears throat> I would say that I'd much rather see something in there than nothing in there. So, I mean, in terms of discussions and everything, you know, I'd rather see it be a business as it's been a business and have people in there than have a completely empty vacant building that's just going to waste, so. Mm -hmm. and, and our plan is to work with people on the lighting and the signage uh, that's open to discussion. I mean, we don't plan on keeping late hours anyway. Yep. So it, it should be daylight hours pretty much most of the time, <coughs> plus in the winter time, of course, it'll be a little later. Mm -hmm. I don't know whether the devil's advocate or what, but I worked at Lyman Moore for many years, and when parents are going into Portland and they're trying to turn into the school, light or no light, they're blocking traffic anyway. So I'm not, I don't see much of an impact early in the morning mm -hmm. when school's in session, because they back up traffic, like I said, whether mm -hmm. there's a light or no light, and people are going, going towards gray and taking a left into the station, there was always a problem there anyways if there's if you're trying to do it during school hours any other time but somebody coming out of there might have a better time a better chance because the people are going 15 miles an hour you might be able to scoot in if you're going towards portland mm -hmm. a lot easier than you were before but uh, the lights have helped people trying to get into the school or or just going in town but i don't see any problem with that light because the parents do back up traffic a lot in that area. So light or no light, I think early during school hours you're going to find a problem no matter what. Mm -hmm. Okay. like to say we uh, this is a plug for NDNA we have um, been business memberships so uh, <coughs> we'd like to have your participation um, we'd love to have you join as a, as a business member put you on our website and kind of show people in the area that you're uh, up and running and ready for, for business sure Neil. yeah good anything else
Well, thanks for your time. Thanks for coming out. And um, if I can get a copy, uh, Maureen, of the, the sign-in list, you can email it to me. And anybody will we'll keep you updated on where we are and what we're doing with the emails. And um, let you know how the process is going. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Thank you.